Uh, for most of you, good morning and uh, welcome to the, the, the Retail webinar on trusted identity verification. And for those, it's not morning, good afternoon or good evening. So we are very pleased to have you all here. Uh, yeah, uh, still remote, still a webinar, but yeah, at least one uh, yeah, face to face guest, Peter. And, and the world in general is opening up again. So there have been some events recently and we're taking that opportunity to, to, uh, yeah, to kind of share or discuss what we've seen there in this uh, webinar, which is themed uh, identity verification trends in the financial sector. Uh, my name is Maarten Wegdam, I'm a co-founder and CEO of ReadID. Um, and um, uh, yeah, here with us is Peter Eikelboom from Volksbank. I'll introduce you long, uh, later uh, more elaborately and online is Andrea McCain all the way from New Zealand, ASB Bank. So for sure the most remote uh, guest ever and, and you might hold that record for a long time because it's very difficult to be further away from the Netherlands than uh, New Zealand. Welcome Andrea. Um, so um, the program is, is, is pretty simple. I'll start with Andrea and discuss a little bit on what we're doing with them and then move on to the trends with Peter and then uh, my colleague or co-founder will, uh, will also join us uh, at the table. Uh, Please do, uh, yeah, so it, it's always, of course, a bit of a challenge to do interactions when we do a webinar, but we do uh, uh, appreciate it. So there is a chat. Please ask your questions. We have our moderator team, uh, Robin and Justin today, who will scan and, and interact and maybe also answer some questions, you know, without involving us. But yeah, some of the questions we can pass them along and, uh, and for example, Peter can, can address some more comments, right? If you think, you know, Peter says something about the trend and you fully disagree, you know, we'll try to have some discussion, uh, even though we're remote. Um, so let's start with, uh, with Andrea. So welcome again, Andrea. Um, so, um, yeah, so you're delivery lead to know your customer and you were in the lead for the implementation of ReadID at ASB Bank. Can you say a little bit more about yourself and ASB Bank, uh, please? Sure, yeah. So uh, we are a uh, wholly owned subsidiary of uh, CBA uh, Commonwealth Bank in Australia, uh, a very big bank. Um, and I've, I'm a bit of a part of the furniture, I guess. I've been around uh, for about 18 years and uh, I was the, um, the original program manager when we implemented our AML uh, compliance program about 10 years ago. Uh, since then, I've, um, among other things, been working pretty heavily in the Know Your Customer space uh, and moving uh, more towards sort of the digital verification space over the last few years. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we... Um, uh, it was quite a, amusing, if you like, that we already had a, uh, a digital verification partner, and um, uh, we actually it, it was it was that uh, supplier who originally told us about NFC technology, um, and uh, so I started googling, and came upon Read ID quite quickly, um, and we decided to do a proof of concept uh, uh, last year, which we were very happy with. Uh, and we um, implemented in April of this year. And I think we are still the only uh, bank in, in the Australasian region uh, to be using this technology. Which is great. And uh, I'd have to say it was also a pleasure to visit you just before COVID hit, right? If we would have planned this uh, one or two weeks later, that would have been an issue. I might have still been in New Zealand and never, you know, I, I might have been forced to become a resident. <laughs> That's right. I managed to fly out just before uh, the, the travel restrictions hit us. Um, so, um, um, so I, I think we've, uh, we have some, so to zoom in a little bit on your use case, can you say this a little bit and can uh, maybe someone show some of the screens that we have uh, that you submitted uh, while you talk us through? How does it work for you guys? What, what's the end user perspective on the service that you implemented? Sure. So at this stage, um, we've been going for about six months now. We uh, have just implemented it for um, identity verification for those customers who commence their onboarding process with us uh, uh, in uh, on our website. Um, and uh, but we're we're in the middle of now continuing to roll it out uh, to basically be able to use for all of our customers, uh, existing customers. Um, uh, related parties, anybody at all that needs to identity verify with us. And uh, we have about a million customers that we've identified on our back book uh, that we are going to need to bring up to speed uh, over the next couple of years. Uh, so it's, it's, it forms a big part of that program of work as well. Okay, good. Um, so 
um, so so you so what were the main so you ha already had the process right which so so uh, on one hand you, you were ahead of some of the European banks right which we we work a lot with European banks right so it, it um, so you were a little bit ahead of that because some European banks don't even have that or yeah um, you already had something so so can you uh, yeah uh, take us a little bit in, in in why you wanted to change that and then also a little bit on what the challenges were in changing that to 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 an NFC based uh, process Sure. So we, yeah, we implemented a, a fairly traditional OCR-based solution back in 2018. Uh, and um, uh, to be honest, right from the beginning, uh, we were fairly disappointed with the conversion rates on that solution. Um, there were quite a number of reasons for that. Uh, one was um, we, we do have uh, quite a specific requirement under the, the New Zealand legislation uh, for AML that uh, in addition to you know having the document uh, a, a photocopy um, of the document doing the biometric match on the customer um, and doing a government check against the government source of that document uh, that we also had to um, have a secondary uh, independent electronic verification of that customer's identity and uh, with so many sort of new to country um, customers that were onboarding with us uh, and obviously often young customers that didn't have a digital footprint, things like that, um, we often weren't able to get that second uh, electronic verification. Uh, in addition to that, we also um, had, from a, from a solution perspective, um, quite a number of issues. So just the difficulty in, you know, customers being needing to sort of check the OCR results um, that had been returned uh, to make sure that what we picked up off the document um, before we sent it off to check with the government source was correct, uh, and also... Um, we ended up with quite a lot of false negatives on uh, the document authenticity. So, you know, thinking that a, a New Zealand driver's licence was a fake when it wasn't, um, it just wasn't a, a really seamless user experience. Um, and, and we really, you know, didn't manage to have a high percentage of customers that we were able to digitally verify without needing to visit um, a, a branch. Yeah. If I paraphrase this a little bit, it's it's so... And the sea brings more security, but in the end, you didn't have a security problem. You had a conversion problem and a, uh, yeah, a data quality problem. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, to kind of meet uh, at least get near to the security requirements or the compliance requirements you had, right? And so it's it's like an indirect benefit of the security that you can yeah, make the the customer journey much smaller and much more uh, yeah uh, yeah let's say predictable Simple. and uh, yeah simpler and and thereby having uh, uh, yeah uh, yeah removing the, the problem so did, did because and if it's a sensitive question you skip it but you did you have a fraud problem was there people getting through uh, funnily enough, um, uh, probably not because we were also doing 100% um, and, and obviously we don't necessarily know that, um, but we, we were doing 100% manual checks on, those, on that as well. So it was fairly resource intensive and we were being very cautious and conservative. Um, so, you know, certainly the introduction of an NFC solution that is just so much higher quality um, in terms of, of being confident in that identity verification makes a big difference. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, of course, you don't know what you don't know, right? So th there might be a lot of... Uh, but I I'm assuming if there was a significant fraud problem, then you would have noticed it by now, right? So if, it's, if it was yeah. running for a couple of years, right? Uh, uh, yeah, it tends to... Uh, yeah, people tend to at some point in time... Uh, yeah, it becomes clear that that's a fraudulent... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, there was some fraud in the identity verification step. Okay, so... Um, uh, so uh, so now you're done and there's nothing else to do or are there more things that you're planning to do uh, around this area? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, we are in the process of, of rolling it out much more widely. Uh, our, our new to bank uh, sort of on, onboarding process represents about 50% of our, uh, sorry, about 25% overall of our sort of total customer population of, uh, of customers that need to be um, verified um, pretty much each year. Um, so we're in the process of doing that. We are also having a look at... Um, 
uh, I think it's okay to say, um, your latest version of your SDK, which now also does include a, um, a visual document capture to look at the possibility of bringing back in a, um, a, a driver's licence journey as well to enable us to sort of support those customers who don't have an electronic passport. Um, but, um, yeah, we will very, very strongly be obviously pushing towards the um, uh, the you know, that being the, the primary journey, Passport um, Egypt, um, because it's such a, a fantastic user experience and just so simple for the customer. Um, and, you know, we, we um, are supporting over 130 um, passports from different countries. So we've been a little bit impacted by COVID, obviously, that, um, that our, our rates at the moment are, are not quite what we had anticipated um, for two reasons. One, because we aren't getting uh, the, the, you know, the immigrants, obviously, our border Order is completely closed, basically. Um, so we're not getting those new to country. Um, but secondly, um, we also unfortunately are in a situation where about 10% of our New Zealand population uh, haven't um, renewed their passports at the moment because of the border lockdown. Um, and so we're working with the regulators at the moment. We don't currently have permission to be able to accept an expired passport, uh, but working to try and do that um, as soon as we can. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So and and for people not aware of New Zealand, New Zealand has a lot of immigrants, right? And which are people that are welcome there, but they have to get a bank account. So that's a significant portion of the, let's say, new customers more than than uh, than the typical European country probably has. And um, yeah, and and yeah, the COVID thing. Yeah. So that's we have had that discussion with with you know banks, but also government organizations all over the world, right? So it's uh, yeah, people tend to not want to. Uh, yeah, they either forget because they don't travel or they don't want to travel, right? Some people. Just just cannot extend their passports or they don't want to. And that's causing problems in these type of processes, but by the way, also in, in just logistics of governments, right? When people do travel, they suddenly all at the same time want to extend their passport. So some uh, some customers of ours then uh, yeah, allow uh, a certain uh, yeah, extended uh, period, right? A grace period for expired document, but that's, yeah. In a highly regulated business, that's not a decision you can make on your own. You have to discuss that with, uh, with the regulators and uh, yeah. And that's just a fact of life, right? Nothing anyone on this virtual table can do about that. Uh, yeah, apart from uh, making a case that it might not be bad if a document is half a year old, uh, yeah, expired. That doesn't necessarily decrease the security of the document, in my view. But um, anyway, so um, so um, uh, so thank you, Andrea. For your time and question uh, and and uh, clear answers on uh, yeah uh, yeah uh, how things have been going in New Zealand, um, so uh, yeah um, so well we before we move over to Peter uh, yeah let's show some uh, video of the Money 2020 event our impressions. Okay, welcome back. Um, so on my left, probably your right, is uh, Peter Eikelboom, Innovation Manager at uh, Volksbank. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, for you only in our drive, so uh, much easier than for Andrea. And on the other side is my uh, co-founder, uh, Will Janssen, uh, yeah, also joining the discussion on trends. Um, the reason to do this, why we put this on the agenda, is because there was the big Money 2020 Europe event, yeah, uh, more or less in our backyard, and, and one of the primary uh, um, fintech or financial events uh, uh, yeah, around. 
um, uh, we saw the video, right? It's uh, it's about money, and as you can see in the video, a lot of money is spent at it. I have to say, it's one of the most more luxurious and expensive events we go to. Uh, yeah, of course, if you have money 2020 in the title, then uh, yeah, some money has to be spent. But there was also Identity Week, which is a, a wider uh, event, not only at the financial sector, but also at uh, a lot of government, especially uh, there, and, and passport printers, etc. Uh, yeah, which we we also attended, and uh, yeah, and and which also gave us some insight into trends that uh, that are going on. Again, questions or comments, uh, yeah, please feel free to use the chat. Uh, let me start with Peter. So, money 2020 is is about money, but it's also about much more. So, uh, yeah. So, so what else did you see there? Yes, when I look back for myself, I see, I think, two major t themes that are there. Of course, it's about money. It's about uh, the old money the, around payments. It's, of course, about the new money, about CBDCs, the digital euro that's coming. But the other big theme was more about data, data, the data sharing economy that is uh, emerging around EIDs, data sharing, and the ecosystem that's uh, around it. It's a trusted ecosystem, so that has some similarities with, with money, with payments, so that's uh, quite obvious why that was also a big theme on that, uh, that uh, conference. Okay. Um, uh, and Will, what did you see? Yeah, the, um, indeed, the, 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 you saw kind of a blurring of roles. Banks used to be banks. Uh, and now suddenly, and, and banks have their supplies. There was a lot of attention also on, on identity verification. I didn't visit earlier events, but some people that, that were regular visitors uh, actually spoke about the tsunami of identity verification uh, yeah. uh, solutions uh, in the market. Lots of uh, AI and biometry, and also uh, finally uh, uh, growing recognition of the, of the importance of, uh, of NFC. But in general, uh, the, the, well, the, the, the field of the, the roles involved in the in the in the in the value. a lot of discussion on that. How are roles now changing under, for example, uh, the EIDAS revision? Uh, how are roles changing under the the, the, the growing importance of uh, of data? Um, so that uh, yeah, that that was what what struck me: new players, new roles, and a bit of uh, also uh, well maybe even worries or discussion on what will be my next role as a bank, as a supplier, as an identity verification party, as a credit card company. Yeah, I think that's, that's quite a logical question because I already mentioned it, that around payments there is a trusted ecosystem about exchanging and storage of money. And I think you could ask the same questions around data. You also there you need a trusted ecosystem and in exchanging and storing your data. And so the interesting question for banks is, uh, we are of course a many, uh, money custodian, are we also becoming a uh, data custodian? And that's the strategic, strategic question that is that's asked there by consultancy companies like InnoPay. Uh, so can you also answer that question? I think it's a quite interesting question because, uh, uh, of course, already when you talk about payments and identity is involved, you, you need to know who is paying whom. Uh, so I think there is already when you look back in the history of banks, uh, uh, the, when you become a customer, we, we just talked about it with Andrea, you, we need to know who you are. So the identity case and, uh, and, and payment case is, is quite close to us. The new area is around data sharing, and that's of course more, much broader than, than only financial data. And that's the interesting thing that's also is, uh, is uh, a question about uh, uh, around the European level, uh, of course, uh, if you are the summer, the European Union uh, declared that we should work on uh, a digital identity framework and that the member states should provide uh, an EID and certify uh, data wallets. And then there's the interesting question, who is going to provide such a data wallet? And that could be banks. Yeah, because I don't mention them. Uh, I think they, they are, uh, are forcing banks to accept them. They're not necessarily saying banks should supply them. Uh, yeah, so... Um, Correct. Yeah. So, but if, if you look at a little bit closer to home, right? So, um, yeah. So, just be so. Uh, uh, banks have, of course, yeah. And, and, and as Andrea explained, uh, in New Zealand, somewhat different than in Europe, right? Europe, we have the AML uh, yeah, directives, and and uh, that's a uh, some certain things in New Zealand have a more specific uh, rule on how to do know your customer. Yeah, with two pieces of evidence or a highly trusted source, and yeah, but but I think the general uh, uh, thing is all over the world. Yeah, there is some form of regulation put on banks on how to know your customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a huge cost, right? And 
at least in Europe, not only in spending money on doing that, but also paying the regulators any time you uh, screw up as a bank, right? Mm -hmm. So, which is uh, very, very significant uh, money, to be honest. Uh, you know, in, uh, when, uh, when I was still more in sales, I would talk to a bank and, and, and they would be in risk of such a penalty, right? Uh, selling them retail wasn't a big problem because, you know, the, the, the license we ask is what if it makes you less than the, 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 the fine it would get. But that's a cost. But can it be, is it just a cost or is it, uh, is it, is it a revenue? Or should banks just then accept that from, so they could stop doing that and just accept it from the wallets, right? And, and kind of get rid of that whole industry or that whole department that do know your customer. Yeah. Or, yeah? I think it's both. Uh, of course, normally you start at uh, what you also were starting at, uh, at uh, some processes, KYC processes uh, should be, uh, could be much more easier when you have this kind of, uh, of uh, digital uh, verification of your ID. Uh, there are a lot of processes within the bank that needs a lot of data. For instance, the mortgage process, you need to check a lot of data. It should be uh, much easier and, and cost efficiency uh, when you could check that data electronically. And verify that data, so that uh, that's also a, a business case. Uh, Andrea was talking about AML, of course, uh, the fraud uh, side or the more identified communication. Uh, do I really talk to to Will uh, for, from a distance when I chat or when I when I, when I uh, answer a phone call? That's one side. The other side is uh, more interesting. Even uh, are there some new value propositions within the bank possible? Uh, for instance, when you talk about, for instance, sustainable mortgages. Yeah. Uh, you, of course, talk about, uh, okay, we can finance, finance your son, solar panels. But in the Netherlands, we have a smart meter in every house that's also producing data. So you also, when you connect that smart meter data to your proposition, then you can make the proposition much richer. And then you can think of new propositions uh, that, that are not possible uh, in the, in the current, uh, current days. Yeah. And when really you look, even more broader, yeah, the, I think the, that new, we're calling it that new data sharing economy is, is, is broader than finance. So I think this is a solution that is, uh, that is benefit, uh, beneficial for everybody. And then you could also say, okay, maybe there are some use cases that are outside the financial area and that could be also could support uh, if, we, if we want to play a role in this new data economy. Yeah, and th this is of course, uh, in my view, a very old discussion. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, which is now getting more traction, right, and more attention. Yep. Um, um, if, if you look a little bit again from the European perspective, we have the, the, the Scandinavian uh, countries, which have a bank ID or similar concept already for a long time, where banks kind of share their uh, yeah, these part of the identity verification infrastructure, yep. and then. Uh, hand that over as a service to others with uh, mm -hmm. high in the 90% coverage. In the Netherlands, we have a slightly more modest version of this, uh, Eden, mm -hmm. yeah, which banks uh, don't trust each other, but they do ask the industry to trust them. Yep. Yeah, so to, to use Eden uh, as, a, as a way to log in, as a kind of like a, a bank-owned alternative to, to DigiD, which mm -hmm. you cannot use in the Netherlands in the, in the private sector. So do you think, because Eden is like kind of a step in that direction, right? Of course, the ambition now is much wider than just this basic identity Yep. Attributes, but so do you think Eden is uh, is a success, and is that, the, or do you think it's a failure? Do you think that that you should just expand upon Eden, or is it something very different? And am I thinking way too narrow here? Yeah, I think it's an interesting question. Uh, I think you could say that Eden is a first step in that direction to try what is possible to 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 see what you have uh, already, of uh, what kind of data you have in store that you can share with other companies. And I think there are two main things that are changing. Of course, now we have identity data, but that identity data, the true source is, of course, the government. So when the government is providing a real EID, I think that's the real ID you want to, want to, to share uh, uh, across uh, uh, to, to other parties. And of course, there could be means like a data wallet that is provided by. And the other thing is that I think, uh, we also discussed that internally, I think, Eden, uh, when you're talking uh, about uh, innovation, uh, a lot of innovation needs in a certain time needs some pivots to be right on track again. And I think that is, we are now in a moment that Eden needs a pivot to, to be uh, on track again with the new regulations that the EU is uh, providing and uh, the combination between EID and data sharing.
Yeah. Uh, so I saw a lot of hesitation also and in, in really embracing a, a, a different role for, for a bank in terms of becoming an identity provider or the data provider. So everybody was talking about a lot of buzz going on also, uh, well, especially in relation to the, to the EU regulation. But nobody really publicly was embracing it. Or, and, and if you saw uh, uh, initiatives in that field, it was always under, under, under a sub-label uh, or a uh, well, spin-off. So a lot of, lot of banks working on it, doing experiments uh, or even launching products. Uh, for example, like, like our bank with DataKeeper that were our guests uh, earlier on. ING had uh, Corp ID for a similar, similar version, but then uh, oriented towards uh, uh, well, uh, companies. Uh, but but not really publicly embracing the fact that that they could fulfil such a role. So really making sure that the the, uh, the responsibilities as a bank, the responsibilities from a well, kind of a new field, uh, are, are, are separated. Um, it maybe is a, is, a, is a good thing. But then also uh, a lot of uh, banks were looking at, at at how their suppliers and their identity suppliers would would evolve. A lot of things, for example, around. Uh, 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 it's me, uh, which has grown fast uh, in Belgium and also expanding uh, uh, to other countries uh, now. So also looking at other parties to supply that role. And, how, and in fact, how how that ecosystem, uh, not of interest in how that ecosystem will evolve, uh, yeah. without any any decisive answers. I think that's important to mention that uh, it is an ecosystem. So we have to work together to make this happen and you could ask what role wants a bank to play in that ecosystem and are there different roles uh, in that ecosystem. Uh, I think there will be different wallets. You already mentioned some uh, some of the wallets. And then it's an interesting question, will there be one, will it, one wallet for every bank or do we have more a common wallet uh, which you could use? Uh, that's an interesting question. But next to the wallet, there's of, of course the, the question who is going to provide the infrastructure beneath it uh, because you're also, with data, you're talking about some kind of transaction that is happening and you want to verify that, uh, that thing and that it has to be trusted. So there are different roles uh, we have to, to make work uh, together and uh, it's interesting to see which role uh, which company is, is taking. And, and ideally, it's, it's an open, uh, open ecosystem so that um, uh, multiple uh, organizations can work together to make this thing happen because I already mentioned it that when this is happening it's it's uh, has benefits for a lot of uh, a lot of companies on the side where you can check very easily your EID where you very easily can can receive uh, validated data and do some things like uh, electronic uh, signatures or electronic uh, um, uh, signing so that's that's I think also necessary in these times of COVID uh, that you can arrange your affairs uh, from a distance yeah yeah, but uh, I mean, the, the, the basic signing and identity verification, to be honest, I think is kind of a solved problem, right? I mean, it's, it's there, you can do it today, right? And uh, yeah, so we, we yeah, so, the, but, but, but yeah, I, th I think it's the next step that, that, that that's, uh, that's fascinating here when you look at really the long-term trends, right? On the short term, I think this is kind of a solved, solved issue in my view. But um, uh, I was thinking about, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you've, yeah, so Dave Birch has this uh, identity is the new money thing, right? So he, he put that a couple of years out there. Um, and, and, and I think he's very right in that if you do uh, payments, uh, if you have the identity, then the payment becomes trivial, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like 80% uh, uh, of the problem you've solved. Mm -hmm. does, does that mean for banks that if they don't become the identity provider, so if that's, you know, a government or EID or something else, someone else does that, that, that the payment is, is no longer a valid service for banks, will that be... Uh, uh, jeopardizing for their, you know, core of their existence? Uh, will, they, will they have to pivot or is it just a nice new business model? Oh, um, of course banking is more than payments and, and payments is an important part and payments is more than the payment, we already discussed that. Uh, and of course you already see trends that other parties like the big techs are provo providing wallets that is also supporting uh, a nice way of, of doing your payments. Uh, still with your your bank, it's not with Apple, but yeah. with, uh, with yeah. your your bank. Uh, that is uh, that still is. that's the word. Still, yeah, and it's an interesting time to see. But I, uh, I believe last week, I believe I heard it from your will that uh, even Google was was saying, okay, I don't want to become a, a full a full uh, fledged bank because of what I was saying, banking is more than payments when you're talking about mortgages, lending. You're also talking about a quite uh, a, a lot of risk, regulations, all that kind of stuff uh, uh, you have to, to, to provide and to be good at. And I think 
the answer will be somewhere in the middle that you have to Ideally, this is an ecosystem where uh, when you provide some kind of service in the customer journey, Andrea was also talking about that, that makes your life easier, then that should of course be part and probably that will be a success uh, uh, that, uh, to, to use uh, next to, to payments. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you really want to be sure that the payment is made, uh, uh, so everything beneath the surface uh, also has to be run smoothly. And yeah. that, uh, so it's I not 80%, it's, it's, it's 50% of maybe what you have to do. Yeah, yeah and so I think there's, still, uh, there's still some significant value add uh, on top of identity to do payment. And of course, there's, there's lending, etc. cetera, diff different story, yeah. right? So that's... Uh, yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we want to discuss the, the direction, uh, but uh, I think then there is an interesting more discussion about CBDCs when you talk about digital money. Uh, so explain that. I'm, I'm sure not everyone in the in the audience uh, knows this, so uh, I, I compare it that the, the, the current way of payments is, is more like uh, posting a letter. Uh, it's about settlement, so you, you, you're doing that in the mailbox, it's going to the other party and there you receive uh, 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 the letter. And that's more or less the way that the current payment system is working. And, uh, and when you talk about CBDCs, about it's, it's, it's a digital variant of, of cash, then normally when you, I give cash to, to Will, that's the payment. So when you have a digital currency, you can, uh, uh, you in theory, the theory, the, you don't need to have a bank account. You can pay with your, your digital uh, euros, and that's uh, so it could be uh, the, the banks in that that uh, area uh, can play a, a role, but are not essentially for playing a role. So that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, yeah, so, so then the, the, at least the obvious questions do I, that I have is how, how, what about privacy, what about scalability, yeah, and, yeah. and, uh, and what's the role? Yeah, we can't yeah, 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 I think you have the same questions over there. When uh, the digital currency uh, from China is uh, completely monitored, uh, uh, when the, hopefully the digital euro has some, some, some privacy uh, regulations around it so that uh, uh, you could, you, uh, with a lot of solutions, you can make it uh, more centralized and more monitor, uh, uh, monitorized, uh, of, uh, monitored. Uh, and uh, you could, of course, uh, make it a bit more decentralized and more privacy friendly. And I hopefully uh, that's the, the, the way we are going in, in Europe, not only with data, but also with your money. Yeah. So you have like, uh, is this one year away or three years, or is it here already and I just didn't notice? Um, no, we talked about money 2020, and the first thing you do is, is take your phone. Because there were 5,000 people, uh, the first thing you did was take your phone, open your, your wallet, your, 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 your yeah. Chronacheck wallet, and, and, and provide your, your credential, your proof that you're healthy. And that's already a first step in that direction, that you are in control where you can enter or not can enter. And uh, I think that is that will expand to what we were talking about. Uh, why don't I have a digital variant of my passport? Why do I always have to carry this, this, this thing around with me? Uh, uh, hopefully that could be on my phone or even on my, my watch when I have to enter some, somewhere. Uh, and it's the same with data sharing. Uh, when I have to, to, to fill in all those forms, uh, uh, why? Uh, the, the, all the data is electronically uh, available. Why, why can I share with a couple of clicks my, my, my data? Yeah. And, and, and the last thing around around signing, uh, why why the, uh, is that 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 impossible that I can agree to something uh, from a distance? Uh, that's, yeah. uh, that's impossible. Maybe the Netherlands, but that's more a Dutch thing. I think some other countries have solved that already, uh, without needing uh, uh, new regulations there or new technology. Yes, of course. But you say it solved it, but I think the combination makes it powerful. You already mentioned it. Uh, it's me in Belgium. You see there that when they combine in a wallet different stuff, uh, yeah. and it's uh, supported by the governments, banks, and telcos. Uh, so you have a, a large yeah. enough reach. Uh, uh, then, uh, then you see it, oh, it's the, the, really the, taking the, off. The, the chicken egg problem here is, yeah. is, is immense, right? And, yeah. and uh, requires, again, an ecosystem. It requires a consortium of, of parties. And uh, yeah. yeah, we are back to the, I've, to I've, I've to worked on some of them and failed in all of them. Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, so, but that's, that doesn't mean that, that uh, yeah, so I, it will happen. It's just a question of when and yeah, how. I, I think you have to, you had the same in the, in the past, the same discussion around mobile. Uh, there was a lot, uh, a lot of years, yeah, mobile is coming, mobile is coming, mobile is coming, and until uh, Apple solved the problem about the, the smartphone, and from that day on, you, you saw it, yeah, mobile is really coming. And I think okay. 
it's, it's here the same. Uh, on one hand, this, this mobile phone is playing a role, and of course, on the other hand, uh, when you have the right uh, legislation from the EU and from the country, then also you can, uh, you can, you can take off. And I think we are now in that moment in, in the Netherlands. Okay. So, uh, so Andrea, you're still on. Uh, so, do you have any thoughts on this? What do you think? Do you see this happening in New Zealand as well? Um, yeah, so we, we are working, we, we do already have a, um, a local uh, government um, uh, digital identity solution. Um, there, there's been not great uptake of that solution. Uh, and, and one of the frustrations for us as a potential user, end user of that solution, um, is the fact that we don't obtain a photo. Uh, so we kind of, to use that solution, we would pass the customer off to um, complete their identity verification return that to, to us, um, but we don't end up with a photo. And that was one of the big attractions for us for, for the NFC solution, obviously, is to get that high quality uh, resolution photo that we can use in the future for sort of broad investigation purposes. Um, so we are working on also a, a brand new digital identity framework um, at this point in time, uh, but, but really we're still very much at the framework stage. Um, so, you know, haven't even got to sort of looking at legislation. So we're certainly not waiting for that. We can't afford to wait for that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's always a good idea. Don't wait, right? So, uh, yeah, so uh, waiting, that uh, that's not necessarily the best uh, solution. Eh? You might, I think you might, uh, yeah, we have uh, Peter's innovation manager probably, yeah, so sometimes you have to just try an experiment with something. It's just that some experiments are very complex and expensive yeah. and some are easier. Uh, yeah, so you try to pick the, the easier ones. Uh, yeah, quick fail, quick win. Uh, yeah, but uh, the, the don't wait. And, and sometimes the devil is in the detail, right? So, uh, yeah, so if, if, if in New Zealand they would share that photograph, that would be a much more attractive uh, proposition from a bank perspective to, to use that service. Yeah, uh, but not, right? Uh, I don't have an opinion on the specific case whether that makes sense here, but it's, sometimes the devil is in the detail. Uh, and, and not in the intention, uh, and that makes it also very complex, right? Mary, in terms of that waiting, that, that is one of the things that, 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 that worries me a little bit, is that, well, now, uh, government has... A, a, a different angle of the government, is, a European government, is playing a role in that identity and wallet uh, and, and EID uh, framework, uh, moving towards the banks, moving towards other data-sharing companies. And there's a lot of people uh, uh, really with large interest looking at what the government will be doing or the European Commission will be doing. Um, but still, they weren't, for example, at Money 2020, only some people from, uh, for example, the Ita Italian government were there. And, and if the expectations are high uh, and uh, the European Commission in, in this federated world cannot live up to those expectations, it might even stall the development uh, a little bit instead of speeding it up. So I really like the ambitions that were formulated, but I'm a bit worried that uh, the European Commission might not be able to live up those uh, up to those expectations, and uh, yeah. uh, we'll run into uh, delays. Zoom a little bit on pivoting, right? I does the, the European regulation that one country has to accept uh, the this identities of another country. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it's not been a huge success, right? I'm, I'm understating here a little bit, right? So, uh, yeah, so so to to a certain extent, this this new version that uh, that that we or they are working on. Uh, yeah, it's also an attempt, I think, to try to save that investment because as a taxpayer, we spent lots of money on it. And we could have, you know, uh, rented a Ferrari and uh, drove everyone over there, right, uh, to, to do the identity verification in person. Uh, yeah, if you look at the cost and the amount of usage that IDAS currently has, right? So, um, yeah, I, for either one of you, do you think that, that this will save IDAS? Will this, uh, yeah, will this, this or will, uh, yeah, or am I just a too impatient person and IDAS is not a failure, it's just taking a little bit longer than we thought it would? My opinion is probably the, the latest one. Uh, I think when we, we, we just, just experienced COVID, of, of course, and there's, you see that there's a really, really a sense of urgency that we need to fix some things where we are now depending on the, on the physical world. And when we talk to the, the government, you also see that, yeah, now we are seeing the reason why we have to do some things. And the other thing is where we, what we discussed earlier on is, uh, my opinion, uh, the government isn't doing things when there is no regulation uh, uh, in place. And I think those two are coming in place. So there's, there's a pressure from the European Union. Uh, we get the uh, video the, uh, in the Dutch law around uh, uh, digital identity uh, this summer. 
And hopefully from that day on, uh, when we talk to the government, you see they're also making plans. So in, uh, in the next year, we should uh, uh, provide, hopefully, together uh, some kind of test environment where we can, can all, all connect and, and, and test and see if, if the way we want to, to make this work is also valid with regulations. And hopefully from that uh, the, uh, the day on, we of year on, we make steps towards more implementation of, 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 of these this things, of these APIs, of this data from the government to make, because that's the, the main reason. When we don't have data, this whole thing is yeah. isn't flying. So yeah. we need we need some data to, yeah. to make to start this making 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 yeah. progress. Yeah, and that's also, but again, personal opinion is maybe the government should do more or on, on a, a lead by example, right? Giving that yeah. data out there, and then you can adapt to another standard. Yeah. That's not so difficult. Yeah. So if you pick the wrong one, you do another one, or you do two. Yeah, as long as it's not a hundred, it's it's fine. And uh, yeah, and and just get it out. So 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 the chicken egg problem doesn't have to be a, a regulation. Right or uh, lots of meetings or a new law, the chicken egg problem can just you know make that data available. Yeah, yeah that as a citizen I should have a right to, but it's now hidden behind uh, yeah uh, phone calls, uh, weird logins, uh, strange PDFs uh, instead of a, a proper JSON that I can uh, yeah. Uh, upload and download in my wallet or somewhere else as I please. Yeah, and possibly I, I do hope and I do think you need that that this type of uh, vision as presented by the European Commission will put the pressure also on the on the national governments to to go towards that direction and to uh, yeah. uh, well, especially yeah. to give up their resistance in, yeah. in moving in that direction. Or, or at least to three years of consultants talking about this and nothing changing. Yeah, that could also be. Yeah, yeah, so about things not changing and, and, and consultants talk. One, one positive thing also about Money 2020 that I really would like to mention, uh, I didn't hear the blockchain word anymore. Uh, ah, that's hardly good. ever. So that's, that's, that's finally the, the people start to realize, well, blockchain is just a technology. It's yeah. uh, maybe a bit mysterious, but uh, uh, it's, it, it was not in any post or in any talk or whatever. So we, okay. we're beyond the... So let's hope that the same thing doesn't happen to wallets. Which, yeah, let's by the way, I don't believe, right? I'm a much, <laughs> much, much better bigger fan of, uh, of wallets, identity wallets, than I ever was uh, on, uh, on blockchain. So let's do a, do a, because we're closing in into the end, so let's do a small uh, round if there's any uh, last thoughts or ideas. Andrea, you're the furthest away, so you, you go first. Any last thoughts or ideas on this subject, trends, identity verification, or am I just catching you by surprise? And, uh, no, no, um, no, really just, I guess, to sort of finish off and say, uh, you know, we're, we're so happy with the solution that we've implemented. Um, we had a fair bit of pain with our previous solution, and um, I think the the expertise that uh, that uh, Red ID were able to demonstrate with the work that they've done, particularly with the Home Office in the UK, uh, you know, we were able to get a, a proof of concept up and running really quickly, um, and and, uh, and and also implement very quickly, um, and, you know, that's just been amazing for us. Thank you very much for those kind words, and, and we never waited for any government or new regulation uh, for this, right? We just did it. Uh, yeah, and, and that's one of my points, right? So, so some things might require a big, uh, yeah, uh, big discussion, but some things you can just do now, right? And, and, and already a step in that same direction. Peter. No, I want to close off with the thing we discussed, that uh, this is an ecosystem and uh, uh, we have to work together to make this happen. We already discussed the, the role of the, the government. But uh, also to say that uh, hopefully banks can play uh, a role in this, this ecosystem to really make this happen and to, to have benefits uh, for, for the customers, for the organizations and uh, for uh, broader, for, 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 the, for the, the countries involved in this. Yeah, yeah I, I fully agree. And I think any, any of these solutions to, to, to solve the chicken egg problem, if it's, if it's more than a point solution for one bank, yeah, it means you need coverage, right? Yeah. And there is not, uh, yeah, uh, the, yeah. So banks have to play nice together, right? And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. And I'm hoping in this, uh, yeah, and, and of course the, in the Netherlands at least has a bad history of banks playing nice with telcos, yeah. So, but but if it's just banks, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a, there, there's precedence that th this can work very well. And and in this case, actually, it should be a worldwide uh, scale, I think even. And yeah, we, we have to do good discussions about that. So the, that's that's uh, already said that it, it is not not a thing from one bank, but it's more and more a service uh, from from the banks, I think. Last but not least, Will. Yeah, let, let, let's take it a bit closer to home for us. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, to see that, uh, I was very pleased to see at Money 20, that identity verification is now taken very seriously. It's not just something you need to do to comply. No, it's really uh, the first 
start of a customer journey where you have to be sure on who you're dealing with and exploiting that that data, that information further in the customer journey. So um, not final solution yet, a lot of attention for, for NFC in combination with bi biometrics, finally. So uh, very pleased that uh, identity verification is taken uh, really as an asset, not as a compliance. Uh, yeah. Compliance issue only. Yeah, and it's the cornerstone of any wallet, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah so and and to be honest, yeah. So we get this passport from the government, right? It has a chip. It's already an electronic identifier. Yeah, yeah and it's out there. It's already decentralized. I carry it around in my pocket. Yeah, and and what with retail, what we try to do is bridge that to the mobile, right? So to allow you this de decentralized identity that you carry around, put it in your other decentralized identity, the wallet, and it doesn't require any regulation or change or big discussion. It's something we can do today, as Andrea explained, we did in, uh, in New Zealand uh, yeah, already, but also for the Volksbank, for example. Yeah, I mean, move away from the technology. I think the, the thing you want to achieve here is to empower you as an individual, that you are uh, able to, to, to be yourself in the digital world, and that you, the things on that are now working in the, in the physical world are also working for you in the, in the, in the, in the digital world. Great. So let me uh, really wrap this up. So, so thanks, Andrea and Peter, for, for joining us uh, yeah, um, for this, this, uh, this interesting webinar. Uh, yeah, there will be recordings online for people that registered, and maybe they'll also appear at some point in time on our website. Uh, yeah, um, uh, so uh, everyone stay healthy, and, 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 uh, and I hope that everyone uh, yeah, uh, gets, uh, we go into a post-COVID uh, world where we can also have more face-to-face uh, -face meetings like Money 2020 and Identity Week. And uh, thank you all, and have, uh, for Andrea, good evening, and for the people closer to here, uh, a good, uh, good day. Bye-bye. <laughs>